What's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCAP, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. And as always, if you're only interested in a few stories, feel free to use the chapters down in the description or just scroll through there in the time bar and they should show up there. First things first, as always, let's go ahead and kick things off with all the major game releases from the last week. So on October 18th, we have Retro Realms Ash vs. Evil Dead, as well as Retro Realms Halloween, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants Unleashed, Unknown 9 Awakening, then moving up to October 17th, we have Blazing Shrike, Killing Time Resurrected, A Quiet Place Throat Ahead, Starship Troopers Continuum, and Super Mario Party Jamboree. Then on October 16th, all we had was Mech Warrior 5 Clans. Then finally, on October 15th, we had Drobo Forsaken Kin, Just Dance 2025 Edition, Neva, and New World Eternum. Next up, two games are free on Epic Games, those being Invincible Presents Adam Eve and Cardboard Kings. These will be free until October 24th at 11 a.m. EST, so you might as well go redeem them because there's no better price than free. Next up, a remaster for Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles was announced. Man, this one got me so hyped when I heard about it. This coming from Gamatsu, quote, Aspire, in collaboration with Lucasfilm Games, has announced a remastered version of the 2000 release side-scrolling action game Star Wars Episode 1 uh, Jedi Power Battles. It will launch for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and PC via Steam on January 23rd, 2025 for $19.99 USD. The remastered release will feature modern controls, 13 newly unlocked characters from the beginning, all levels unlocked, the verses and training modes introduced in later releases of the game, two-player couch co-op and more end quote so like i said before this one got me super hyped when they announced it this is a classic from back in the day and i highly recommend checking this one out when it releases next up tomb raider 4 5 and 6 remasters were announced that's coming from gamatsu quote aspire has announced tomb raider 4 5 and 6 remaster for ps5 xbox series ps4 xbox one switch and pc via steam epic game store and gog it will launch on february 14th aka valentine's day of 2025 for 29.99 usd it includes tomb raider the Last Revelation, Tomb Raider Chronicles, and Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness, aka Tomb Raider The Dark Trilogy, as some have dubbed it. So, yeah, again, this is really exciting. Obviously, we only just had Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 earlier this year in 2024, so it's really cool to see such a quick turnaround for the next remastered trilogy, and it's also just cool seeing Tomb Raider get some love, because, I mean, this is obviously a legendary franchise, and it's been a while since we've had a new game, but still, you know, introducing the new generation to these older games, or just giving boomers like me a way to go back and re experience these games again it's just it's absolutely amazing and i'm all here for it next up the tetris forever release date was announced it's coming from digital eclipse on x quote tetris forever launches on steam gog nintendo switch ps4 and 5 xbox one and series x and s on november 12th 2024 and that's it. So there you have it. In less than a month, we'll finally have our hands on this game. For those unaware, this is the Tetris game that basically looks to compile as many games as possible from Tetris's history, whether it be, you know, including like certain variants of the game as well. Tetris is always one of those safe games for me. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter what's going on. If I'm just looking for something to pick up and play real quick, Tetris is always there. Tetris Effect is like the main one that I play nowadays just because I love that game so much between the art style and the soundtrack and the vibes of the game. That game is fantastic, but I'm really excited for this one to come out. And it may just be my next go-to Tetris. We'll see. I, I have a feeling I'll still keep going back to Effect just because I really love that game, but I mean, having so many Tetrises on offer all in one package, yeah, that's a steal. Next up, Astrobot free DLC is available now. That's coming from PlayStation Blog. Quote, starting on October 17th, we will be releasing the first of our brand new speedrun levels, Building Speed. These levels will test your platforming skills and alongside an online leaderboard, which will give you the chance to compete against all of your PlayStation friends. Following on from this, we will release a brand new speedrun level each week, so by the time you have preferred did every jump, hover, and spin in one level, a new challenge will await you. The release schedule is as follows, October 17th, October 24th, October 31st, November 7th, and November 14th. They also note that all Astrobot updates from October 17th to the 14th of November will be available every Thursday at 6 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. BST, and 10 p.m. JST. What's more, each of these new levels contains two brand new special bots for you to rescue. That's 10 new beloved characters to add to your crew. Lastly, the best thing, it's all all at no extra cost, end quote. So again, obviously we had talked about this when they first announced it, but the fact that they're doing free DLC is just fantastic. Obviously that, you know, considering the fact that the base game itself wasn't even full price, they easily could have charged for this, but Team Asobi, they're real ones. Astrobot is, is an absolutely fantastic game, and if you have not played it yet, I highly recommend it, and I am so excited to play through this DLC. Next up, just something I wanted to let you guys know is that an Xbox partner preview was announced. However, by the time you guys are seeing this video, it would have already happened, but at the time of me recording it, it hasn't happened yet, because I record these in the, you know, afternoons of Thursday, and then you guys see it the next morning on Friday. So, again, this has already happened, so if you want to go watch that, you can. Otherwise, I will be doing a full recap of everything that 
is yet to be announced at the Xbox Partner Preview, but again, for you guys, it already happened, so it's just this weird Matrix time thing, so we'll do a full recap in the next episode, but as of now, yeah, it was announced. Next up, a PlayStation concert was announced. Now, this is really cool. This is coming from PlayStation Blog, quote, announcing PlayStation the Concert World Tour from 2025 to 2026. I'm pleased to share that the teams here at PlayStation have been working together with Roadco Entertainment and GEA Live to develop a groundbreaking live music event that brings our most iconic gaming soundtracks to life under the PlayStation banner for the first time. With a state-of-the-art production, the show will merge thrilling music, cutting individuals, and legendary video game titles into an unforgettable experience. Experience. PlayStation the concert transports fans into the epic worlds of God of War, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, and Horizon franchises, amongst many others that reflect our 30 years of making games that have not only captivated players, but are celebrated for their breathtaking and immersive soundtracks too. The global tour launches with a world premiere on April 19th, 2025 in Dublin, Ireland, before uh, heading to more than 200 cities across Europe, the UK, the US, and beyond. Whilst we are only announcing European dates at this time, be assured we'll be announcing other world locations very soon." End quote. So, yeah, I'm sure they're going to be opening it up to many more player, uh, places, considering the fact that this is called, like, the Worldwide PlayStation uh, Concert Tour or whatever, but I am so excited for this, and I am most definitely going to try to get tickets to go see this, because, I mean, uh, right, right there, like, they already teased for Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, The Last of Us, and Horizon, and if they're doing God of War, and if they're covering games from the last, you know, 30 years that they've been making games, I can only assume that that not only means the new God of War games, but also the OG ones, and for those of you that have also played the OG God of War games, you know how amazing the soundtracks were, but then other games like Last of Us, I'm, I'm, just, I'm ready to cry. This is really cool and really unexpected, and I'm really excited to see what other game soundtracks they end up playing at those shows, because obviously, you know, they have so much up their sleeve that they can pull from. As soon as we get more information about, like, you know, dates and more specific shows, especially when it comes to, like, the U.S. and all that, since we all, we all we got at this time was, you know, like, some of the European dates, I'll definitely let you guys know. Next up, the Analog 3D was announced. Now, unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to put some Mario Odyssey trailer gameplay on screen, because Nintendo's been attacking a channel that show any sort of emulated footage lately, unfortunately. But anyway, this is coming from Analog.com. Quote, Introducing Analog 3D, the future is here, a reimagining of the N64 in 4K resolution, 10 times the resolution of the original N64. Analog 3D is 100% compatible with every original N64 game ever made. It's region-free, has Bluetooth LE, dual-band Wi-Fi, four original-style controller ports, entirely new next-gen analog hardware featuring 3D OS, which is the next iteration of their analog OS, as well as uh, being engineered entirely in FPGA, which means there's no emulation. It's basically just like running it on original hardware. So there's not going to be any of those, you know, random incompatibilities that you would see with software emulation, like potential input lag, graphics slash audio inaccuracies, timing or frame rate issues, and more. For the first time, you can re-experience the N64 exactly as it was meant to be without compromise. And along with this, they also announced the new 8-bit Doe 64 controller, where they say, quote, we were closely with 8-bit Doe to design a wireless Bluetooth recreation of the original N64 controller with a modern form factor. Crafted with an uncompromising attention to detail, the C buttons, D-pad, and AB buttons retain the original size, sub layouts, and feel, featuring a superior quality Hall Effect joystick with the original style N64 gate. They also mentioned that you can update your 8-bit Doe 64 controller directly with Analog 3D by plugging it in. And then just to recap, they have a bunch of bullet points at the bottom that we'll just run through, so 100% compatibility with original N64 game cartridges, region free, uh, it's compatible with all the original accessories, original style N64 cartridge slot, and expansion pack support built in as far as video goes 4k hdmi output ntsc and pal support lag free zero signal degradation uh original display mode crt and pvm models variable refresh rate then as far as the 8-bit doe 64 controller goes uh it's going to be retailing for 39.99 sold separately not included with analog 3d the controller will be compatible with analog 3d nintendo switch windows and android with d input and s input modes vibration support with analog 3d and switch turbo function and a Hall Effect joystick, and then some of the features of the console being two USB ports, charging wired support, SD card slot including a 60, uh, 16 gigabyte SD card, dual band Wi-Fi with OTA wireless, 3D OS updating, again that's the new operating system, Bluetooth Classic and LE, four original style controller ports, up to four players supported, wireless and wired, the 8-bit Doe 64 controller updating via analog 3D system when you use it with a wired connection, 3D OS in 4K, and a 220K LE Intel Cyclone 10GX. 
specs. And then in terms of what's in the box, it comes with the analog 3D, an HDMI and USB cable, and a worldwide USB-C uh, power supply. And then for the audio, for anybody interested in that, it will feature 48 kilohertz 16-bit PCM audio, and pre-orders are available now for $249.99. I looked through the site and I, not, I did not see a release date as to when it will be available just to purchase and not outright pre-order, nor did I see a date on when these will actually be shipped, but I'm sure if you go ahead and pre-order it, they might give you an estimate there. It's hard to say. I don't... I'm not planning on pre-ordering one just yet, but at some point I will. It's one of those situations where I'm very content with my original N64 and the whole setup there. And, you know, if I'm going to play an N64 game, I'd rather just play it with the original setup, original controllers and cables and all that. But I'm not against this. Obviously, I'm all for emulation, in which case this isn't actually emulation. This is FPGA, but you know what I mean. It's along the same realm. And one day I would like to get my hands on this. But for the time being, I still wanted to mention it just because it is so cool. And I love every time the analog makes these type of devices because again it's really interesting technology it's not actually emulation it's basically recreating the original hardware and that's awesome next up apparently xbox games will be purchasable on android this is coming from sarah bond on x quote the court's ruling to open up google's mobile store in the u.s will allow more choice and flexibility our mission is to allow more players to play on more devices so we are thrilled to share that starting in november players will be able to play and purchase xbox games directly from the xbox app on android end quote so i don't know what the limits to this will be i don't know if this will be a situation where because for those that don't know xbox is looking to open up their current cloud streaming program to where not only can you play the games that are available through game pass through the cloud but also games that are just in your library so that's something that we'll actually be talking about here soon but i don't know if there's going to be any games that you can actually play natively on android but i'm assuming at the very least this will open you up to be able to play more of your library outside of game pass on android through the cloud. Again, I'm hoping that maybe there's some native support for some of the lighter games, maybe. Like, for example, Grease is on Game Pass, and I know for a fact that an Android device could handle that game, so I don't know if there's going to be native support there for certain games, if it does, like, a check to see if your hardware can run it. But regardless, this is pretty cool, and just I wanted to cover it for anybody that, that likes to game on their mobile device and was looking to play some Xbox games on there. Next up, Call of Duty is coming to Xbox Cloud Gaming. This is coming from news.xbox.com. Quote, we've shared our vision to deliver great gaming experiences for players across devices. Today, we're excited to continue bringing new opportunities to enjoy some of your favorite games wherever you are. We're thrilled to reveal that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be playable with Xbox Cloud Gaming for Game Pass Ultimate members at launch and will begin rolling out to players on October 25th, 2024 at 10 a.m. PT. In addition, we're also bringing Xbox Cloud Gaming support to Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone for Game Pass Ultimate members on the same day. This is a first for the COD franchise and a win for the community. Players will be able to access multiple COD games with Xbox Cloud Gaming for the first time, and Game Pass Ultimate members will be able to enjoy COD in more places than ever before, including on their consoles, PCs, mobile devices, Samsung TV, well, it says select Samsung TV, so just make sure your Samsung TV can actually do that, Amazon Fire TV, and MetaQuest devices. This opens up even more ways to play Black Ops 6 starting on day one at launch, end quote, which just means it's official. We can play Black Ops 6 on our Amazon Fire Sticks. So excited. No, but obviously this is a win. The more ways that you have gaming available to people, even if it is through the cloud, you know, for a guy like me, I'll always 110% of the time choose playing a game natively. I will literally just not play games through the cloud. That being said, for some people, whether it be due to internet speeds and download speeds or just not wanting to suck up like 500 gigabytes for all the Call of Duties, you know what I mean? Um, you know, having this as an option is really nice and just helps to open up the gateway to gaming even more, especially when it comes to a franchise that appeals with so many people like Call of Duty. Say you don't have a console, but you have, oh, an Amazon Fire Stick or a smart Samsung TV, which a lot of people do, then hey, even your grandma can get down with a bit of Black Ops 6 with the boys, you know what I mean? All around a win, I'm just really curious as to how how the streaming quality and gameplay experience and latency is all that all that is going to be especially when a game as huge as call of duty i'm sure the servers are going to be absolutely slammed that day but we'll see how things go and i'm sure channels like digital foundry will do a pretty in-depth breakdown on it and finally we the consumers are starting i say starting because we have a long way to go are slightly starting to win the fight against digital media and our ownership granted none of it is actually changing and we still don't own our digital media 
But at least for, you know, the, like, the more casual consumers, they're making it a bit more apparent that, hey, you don't actually own this thing. The first of which being Steam. So, Steam has went through and added warnings on their digital games when you go to purchase them in your cart. This coming from Engadget, quote, Steam appears to have started uh, posting a notice in its shopping cart that purchases on its storefront are only for a license and not a game. According to a notice spotted by Engadget, it looks like an attempt by the company to get ahead of a new California law coming next year that forces companies to admit that buyers don't actually own digital content. When you open your shopping cart with items inside and before going to payment, a notice at the bottom right states, quote, a purchase of a digital product grants a, uh, grants a license for the product on Steam. This is the first time our editors have seen a notice like this, so it appears to be relatively new, end quote. So again, this is just <laughs> round of applause. I wish that this would be applied to all of the various platform holders, not only on Steam, but also Epic Games and Xbox and PlayStation, Nintendo, all that, but Hopefully within the, uh, within time that will happen because right now there seems to still be a lot of confusion when it comes to the more casual consumers anyway where they think oh I spent money on this thing therefore I own it and you know you, you can't really blame them for that because that's kind of how the economy works you buy a piece of bread you aren't buying a p you know you aren't buying a license that piece of bread no you buy it you go home you eat it and your body does what it wants to do to it but unfortunately with digital media it doesn't exactly work that way you buy it and there's not really a way for you to own it own it unless you buy it through like GOG in which case yeah that's a close as you're going to get to actually owning a digital product and that's why anytime i buy games on pc i only spend money on gog unless there's no other option in which case yeah sure i'll go to steam if i have to but again not a pc guy i'm a physical game collector i play on console but different conversation for a different day but anyways all that being said yeah i wish more platform holders would actually enforce this or add this to their carts no there, there's no sign as to when that could happen though i feel like this should be just the law everywhere that hey you have to be upfront with the consumers that they're not actually buying a product they're buying a license to it, but again, huge round of applause for Steam, and hopefully this will help some buyers think twice before purchasing their next digital product. I'm not saying nobody should ever buy digital because it's completely up to the consumer how they want to spend their money, it's also just worth noting that again what you're spending your money on you don't actually own but anyway that is all the stories that i have for you guys this week and if you want to catch new episodes of wgc as soon as they go live they go live every single friday at 9 a.m est so i'd love to have you here but anyway that's gonna do it for me guys have an amazing day and an amazing weekend stay beautiful i love you all peace